Hi everyone, Jan here, let's build Shopify and it's great to talk to you all again because last week I went to an event on the Canarian Islands and I wanted to tell you a little bit about it. So I went on a plane from Germany, the area where I live, to Las Palmas, which is the capital of Gran Canaria. And the event was about writing some software or building a prototype with some environmental impact. And that's why you will see everyone in green. And we had lots of students there and some camera teams. And I also got the opportunity to speak in front of a lot of people, which was super exciting for me, but also a lot of fun. And during my time there, I got reminded of how cool it is to work in a field of industry where you could technically work from anywhere in the world with just your computer and a good internet connection. And today I thought it would be cool if I share my five top strategies to find freelance projects if you're starting out as a developer. And this will also help you if you're running a store so that you know where to look for good freelancers. So it should be a lot of fun. Let's go. All right. So the first one might seem like a no brainer, but actually it's pretty powerful. And that is to seek within your personal network. And by that, I mean, you should ask your family, your friends, your coworkers, because I think most of the people would already know someone who knows someone who has heard of somebody that is actually looking for a developer. And it will be super easy to get in touch because you already have the personal connection. So the advice is don't underestimate the reach that you already have. Number two is going to local events and meetups. And this depends a little bit on the area where you live, but I think it can be super useful to meet other developers and retailers in person so that you can learn from other people's experience. And if you introduce yourself as a developer, there will be a ton of opportunity to pick up a project here and there. And now the question becomes how you can find these local events and meetups. And one site that I was frequently using is meetup.com. So here you could type any of your interests. So it could be anything from sports to e-commerce, WordPress, Shopify, whatever it is. So let's go with e-commerce. And then you would see all the events in your local area. So for example, here we have the Shopify meetup in Cologne. And you would see that the group has 72 members. And now I could just join this group and go to the next event. And usually someone would provide a few snacks and maybe some soft drinks. And you would have some presentations but also a lot of time for, let's say, networking in an open and a casual environment and atmosphere. So I highly recommend giving this a try. All right, coming in at number three, we have Facebook groups and forums. And even on Facebook alone, you would have at least a trillion groups around e-commerce and Shopify. And in these groups, you would have large communities. So for example, this is the one of the agency I'm working for, and we have 5,000 members, but it's only oriented towards the German market. And in here, we have people asking questions and helping out on each other. And if you as a developer can answer some of the more technical questions, I can almost guarantee that after a few days, you will have the opportunity to pick up some projects from there. And you will also learn how real clients communicate and articulate their problems. So there's a lot to learn from these groups. And the equivalent would be to do the same thing on forums. And the Shopify forum even comes with a section about Shopify and e-commerce jobs. So people can post their project listings and then as a developer, you can send your application and you might be even able to pick a project from here. On number four, we have freelance websites and there are a ton of them out there, but most work in a slightly different way. So for example, we have Fiverr.com where developers can post, let's say, predefined services and you as a retailer could just book that service. And in contrast on freelancer.com, the retailer would just post the project description and his budget and then different developers could bid on that project and the retailer would just pick the one that fits the most. And the third one that I want to show you is storetasker.com. This is a freelance platform exclusively for Shopify. And to be honest, I haven't worked on any of these personally, but from what I've heard is that on these sites, the competition is quite big. And if you want to be successful, you need to find a way to stand out in some unique way, or you should start at a low price point until you pick up some reviews. And yeah, you could just give it a try. Last but not least, on number five, I have another quick one for you. And that is my channel, Let's Build Shopify. Because under most of my videos, I have a ton of people asking questions and I love them doing this. But as the channel grows, it becomes significantly more hard for me to answer all these questions in person and sometimes one slips by. And so I want to invite anyone to answer these questions and I'm pretty sure there will be opportunity to pick up a project here and there. And I can also guarantee that the competition on my channel will be comparatively low to these other freelance sites. All right, lovely people, that's it for today's video. And as always, I hope you found some value in it. If you want, you can share your experience with freelancing down in the comment section. 
and I'm super excited because we will get to see each other more often from now on and it's also why you want to subscribe to the channel and then I hope to see you in the next video. Bye.